Welcome back. Today we got a little problem with our Transwave face converter. We're going to take it apart and have a look at it. Something isn't right. Welcome back. We just wanted to use our face converter and apparently the boost didn't work anymore. So we narrowed it down to this device. I think it's a load control thingy which um, kicks in the boost or depending on, on the voltage. Anyway, we took it apart and what we found was this. The transformer is shot. So we need to figure out what the voltage is and uh, see if we can find another one. I guess it's 24 volts. Maybe it says something. Ah, oh, there is something written on it. So we need to replace that transformer and hopefully then it works again because that is clearly shot here. There was a bit of a firework inside. It smelled funny. That's where it belongs to. It goes into that socket here. That's how these face converters look inside. Not much in it. Transformer, a few capacitors, and apparently they've been switched with that contactor here. According to the load, uh, it kicks in a boost function. Let's have a look what's inside of these face converters. It's actually not rocket science, there's uh, very little inside. Um, we've got our mains input. To here we have 230 volt, but that could be 115 or 120 volts, whatever the voltage in your country is. We have a transformer, uh, which is usually a single coil transformer, gives you 400 volts or uh, whatever the uh, three phase voltage in your country is. Um, again, the problem is we only have two phases. That's our motor with the three coils. Could be in delta as well, but uh, I just made it in star here. Um, so what we're going to do with the third phase, which is this one. So this is... Um, we need to produce the third phase with capacitors, because capacitors are actually producing a phase shift. Um, and the problem is it's load depending. Um, and also it's not really 120 degrees, it's it's a bit odd, that's the reason why uh, three-phase motors are sounding a bit odd on a, on a static phase converter. So what we have here is a bunk of, we got, usually there's one or two capacitors are constantly there to produce a sort of three-phase voltage. Um, the switch, which says one, two, three, four, five, um, just adds extra capacitors. Uh, the boost light comes actually from this device. What it does, it's adding an extra capacitor when you start the motor. But this is too much when the motor runs. So what they do, they're sensing the voltage here. And if the voltage is getting too high, this capacitor is switched off and that's exactly the device which didn't work anymore so we only had this so the start was really poor uh, no matter what I did with the switches here there could be some more could be could be more switches and more capacitors here depends on how many positions your switch has um, so we took that apart looked inside and uh, you can see in the video it was it was actually the transformer and the senodiode. That's it. It's very simple. There is no rocket science in it. It's uh, just a few bits and bobs wired the right way. Again, 230 or mains voltage in uh, and the corresponding three-phase voltage, in this case 400 volts in, in UK between the phases, uh, out. The third phase is produced with capacitors depending on the switch position. For starting, this is usually always on. And if you turn the motor on, it's sensing the voltage. If the voltage is getting too high, it just switches that extra capacitor off. Could be one or two, depends. Um, otherwise, if you won't have this extra boost circuit, it, the motor will start very poorly. If you have too much capacitors, 
the motor sounds odd and draws way too much current. So yeah, it's it's a solution which works. It's not yeah, it's not ideal, but yeah, it does work. And uh, you're losing about 30% of your torque um, just because it's not really three phase. If you got three phase voltage, you got 120 degrees between each phases, and uh, the third the third one here is is somewhere 100 or 90 maybe. So it's just a bit egg shaped, but it does work. Hope that's clear so far. Any questions, let me know, and uh, I'll try to answer them. So let's get on with the fix. Well, we got cylinders of transformers, but nothing fits. So I came up with this idea got a 24 volt power supply. Uh, got some wires, to get the transformer out, and just feed 24 volt DC in it. Um, that should do it. So we can carry on doing what we want to do. And if you ever wondered how how you twist these cables, you can do it with a power drill. But I don't have one on hand right now. You just hold the end, and then. works. And now we're going to solder that to the other side, uh, drill a hole in that uh, enclosure and connect this side to the power supply and then we should be okay. We got a transformer out. You clean a little bit. Uh, it's pretty simple. Essentially this is plus because the two diodes are actually pointing in this direction. I checked the diodes they're okay so I'll leave them in. But this is plus and the center one, this one, is ground and that's where our 24 volts go. So here we have it. Plus is here, that's where the diodes are coming. Ground is here, where the center tap of the transformer was. Transformer is out. That's our old transformer. Doesn't look very nice. It goes to the scrap bin. All right, let's drill a hole in the housing. So here we got it all together. When you push it in, make sure I don't know if that's visible to align the pot properly, so the knob is at the right position. It was at 300 volts. So push it back together, put the power supply in, and try it. So we're done so far. Power comes from here. That's 230 volts into the power supply. Uh, the the rail was long enough so I could fit that. So that goes back in here. Two hands for that. And uh, then we should be good to go. Let's fire it up and see what it does. So that's the very first smoke test. And it works. Power is there and we heard the, the boost kicking in. And the boost light is back on, which wasn't the case before. So, I think we're back to life. Uh, when you power this thing off, be careful. The capacitors may still have some remaining voltage. Um, don't touch anything before you check it. it. It can kill you. So the contactor kicks in, that's the boost. And according to the position of that switch at the bottom, which is this one, um, a amount of capacitors is actually switched into, um, to, well, basically to simulate that third phase. It's not really three phase; it's a bit X shaped, but uh, yeah, it does the job. Um, I might do a video about these things and uh, what's the drawbacks of these ones and using uh, inverters. Anyway, let's give it a try. Oh, just f first put the panel back because otherwise I can't plug anything in. Put the panel back at least two screws or so and then we'll try it. Well life would be too easy if it's just that. That diode here is, has a short. We're gonna replace that. Uh, hopefully that's all of them. I don't know exactly what it does. We'll see. Need to figure out what it is. 
I think it's a one in forty one forty eight, but I'm gonna check that on the under the microscope. As usual, we didn't have twelve volts. We got five point six, we got eleven, we got eighteen, fifteen, but no twelves. So what I did, two five point six and one one in forty one forty eight. So 5.6 plus 5.6 is 11.2 plus the 0.7 volts of the normal diode. Uh, bear in mind, diodes are going the other way around, uh, in opposite to Sena diodes. Uh, I checked it with 24 volt supply, and I'm having 12.2 volts here, so that's fine. Um, let's put it together and see if it works or not. So we got it back to life. <coughs> That's what we want, and then it comes back. Let's get up here. Right. So this relay is checking the voltage on the third phase, and once it's going over a particular voltage, uh, 300 volts in this case, it turns it off. So that means if the voltage is getting too high, um, you've got too much capacitors for the motor you're actually connected right now. So, let's do it again. So, so that contactor kicks in, turns the extra capacitors on, and uh, that's about it. So let's get the cover on and pray. There isn't anything else. But at least the mill works, so hopefully the latest is not working as well. Let's get it back together. So now we have the phase converter fixed and uh, hopefully that's all working now. And once you get it running, you're actually setting for the minimum current here. Well, usually you look for the lowest current. You can hear that eventually it doesn't sound right so on this old motor it's probably a bit better because it's a 420 volt motor so maybe it needs a little bit more but normally you look for the lowest current or near the lowest current and that's about it and then you turn it back on All right, with the That sounds about right from runoff. It's an old motor. They sound different to modern motors. All right. That's it from the transwave repair. Unexpected, but uh, it's got to be done. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, until next time.